almost like having a, a giant dragon or something locked in the basement. And the first couple of times you go down there, you get absolutely scorched to bits. But then you kind of make yourself armor and you make yourself a sword. And then like you're able to go in and attack it a little bit. And then maybe you have to retreat and come back with the bazooka. Do you know what I mean? Welcome to ADH Derp with Stephen and Herf. ADH Derp, where whimsy meets focus with Stephen and Herve. Join us on a journey through the quirks and curiosities of ADHD as we navigate the delightful chaos of our minds and explore the magic with the neurodiverse world. Strap in for laughs, insights and a sprinkle of randomness as we embrace the unique adventures that come with ADHD. Episode 4, Stephen Daly. Right, so yeah, getting into the swing of doing this micro intro. I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be like, um, so it's been a while since we recorded. How's it been? How have you been? How have you been getting on? That kind of way. I'll go from there. Let's just go for it. Let's just go for it. Imagine imagine the uh, the intro. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, it's all very, very that was nearly <laughs> crystal maze there. <laughs> it's all very dramatic and energetic. So it's uh, been yeah. a few few weeks since we've actually been able to record it's been like we've done our our guest interview we've had a few different things up and down uh i've been away on holiday uh you've been you've had exams how have things been been busy been really really busy you know even though we haven't been doing uh active recording or stuff we've been like outside of just general life we've been constantly on the the content dragon or constantly yep. battling the content dragon like, <laughs> yeah, you went away just before i think episode two dropped was it or episode yeah three? i went away just after episode one had come out and episode okay. two was i went away on the sunday and episode two was coming out on the wednesday yeah yeah so that that kind of whole and and not not just that, but we had decided that instead of bi weekly, we were going to start going weekly. Um, just in the middle of that, yeah, yeah, just kind of willy nilly. Okay, episode one came out, people are liking it. Two weeks seems like a long wait. Yeah, yeah. that was like just from my, my own perspective. I didn't want to wait that long, but then it became oh, I've got a week and a half to get this episode done and edited. Fuck, now I've got a couple of days to get it done and edited plus i also have to get the other shit done because steven's away and i was like oh fuck and then <laughs> i remember one of the days we were texting and uh i was like yeah i'm not doing episode two editing i've just decided i'm gonna look at editing the fourth episode which is the first guest episode and i was like F- what, what the fuck am i doing like, and it's, <laughs> you know you get so bogged down in and so overwhelmed at the the kind of upcoming deadline, the stress of that big thing that you're like, I'll do fucking anything else. It doesn't matter what it is, even if it's going to put me <laughs> on the fucking back foot. But uh, yeah, it's been real busy. Um, like say exams, I loads of exams. Uh, yeah. And one self-inflicted exam. So I'd like, uh, I had a, a college exam for Scrum, uh, which is like a, a methodology for running projects, software development projects. Then I had uh, a programming quiz as well. Then another kind of practical test over two hours uh, online. And then that wasn't enough for me, you know, because I'm clearly some sort of masochist that I decided because I did so well in the original scrum test, I'll do the certification exam. So that was like, okay, it was like 80 questions over the course of an hour or something like that, Um, which thankfully I passed. So I got the certification, but uh yeah, it was a crazy, crazy week. All actually, while that was going on, we had another big, huge project that we were working on as a team. Um, there's like four of us on the team. So we're trying to get that in as well. So yeah, crazy, 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 wild, wild, wild. What about you? You Did you have a nice holiday? Yeah, it was great. Uh, we went to Portugal as a family. Um, that was more for Juliet than us. But we had a great time as well, but uh, it was an all-inclusive holiday. So she nice. got to learn what uh, free food meant and absolutely cherished having daily pizza and having daily watermelon and just 
uh, being being in the sun, being able to go to the pool, just having just having it nightly entertainment and just thinking everything is great. Nice. Uh, that was fun. That was that was fantastic. Uh, I've been lucky enough to be off for the last two weeks, so uh, I haven't been quite as. Oh, here's one for you. I've been lucky enough to be off for exactly one year. Is that exactly one year today? Today, today was my last day last year of work. Jesus, yeah, kind what of a, just blew uh, my mind earlier on. I was like, what the fuck? That's a hell of a milestone. It's nuts. But like, when you think of that, look at what you've done with that year. I know, yeah, like, it's been the most productive year of my life. Yeah, you know? I've done so like, much. Day day by day, it probably feels like oh, I'm doing nothing. I'm doing nothing. I'm not. I'm like I'm not progressing. I'm not achieving anything. But when you actually like reflectively look back over that that period of time, like you've done a master's, you've like another child on the way, you've like you've launched a podcast that we're both absolutely loving, and I yeah. think we're like we're learning so much not only about each other but about ourselves, about the skills that it it takes to actually do this. And it's pushing us both, I think, outside of our comfort zone in terms of getting in touch with people, uh, yeah. in terms of like the, even those social skills of talking about something that you're kind of intrinsically vulnerable about on a platform where a lot of people are watching it and like they're looking at you for that that thing that you're vulnerable about. That's the reason that they're yeah. engaging with you, that they're talking to you and listening to you. And that's like in any other kind of format, that would be terrifying. But I'm finding it really, really freeing. It is. And, and yeah. I'm the same as well. But it, it like to touch on one of those points, like it's you're you're like you can be vulnerable in your life in different aspects of your life, you know, and usually you get to control <laughs> who you're vulnerable to. When you do yeah. something like this, you're you're opening it up to anybody. You know, so it, it literally could be anybody across the world who yeah. finds you and, and watches you talk about, you know, your own insecurities, your own problems, your own life or whatever it is. And just as you were saying that, I was like, Jesus Christ, like, <laughs> like we're, we're controlling every single aspect of this podcast, except for who sees it, you yeah. know? Well, we are still controlling that as well. And the choice that we've made is to give it freely up to people because of where we found ourselves, the questions that we both had, even before we both found out that we both yeah. uh, had this, uh, the questions that we had, the things that we were struggling over the course of, not only our own lives, but uh, for, sorry, not only over the course of our lives, but since we got, got diagnosed, since we had access to all that information, it, we still had questions. We still had, yeah. uh, still, kind of coming across things going what does this mean what does that mean like even just before we were uh we recorded i was doing another small video about impulse control disorder which is very commonly diagnosed with adhd uh but it's not often discussed and it's a huge part like the impulsivity aspect is a massive part of uh ADHD, but people don't often talk about the uh, the impulse control disorder part. So I spent some time looking that up, and then I decided this is something that I have questions about. Yeah, and I'm definitely not the only person who's been diagnosed with ICD. So why not put that information back out there in a way that's easy to digest, that in a way that people can get the core nuggets of information, and that's that's how we're controlling that aspect. Like, although we can't on a granular level, control each individual person who sees or hears what we put out there. We're choosing to put that out there. And that that's how we're controlling that. It, it's a way of letting people know that we intend to have conversations yeah. about specific things. So, um, but again, like that's something that we've asked for. Give, yeah. give us feedback, give us information on what topics you want to hear about. Give us information on the format of the the podcast. What do you like? What do you not like? Like people wanted us to say fuck. They didn't yeah. like the beeps, so we kept the fucks in. They got rid of the, the fucks beeps. There. <clears throat> so now we're fucking all over the place. Yeah. So yeah. Not the way all of us would want, but yeah. <laughs> uh, God. So right. Jesus Christ. We definitely do. I, I think somebody gave us 
uh, the idea of having like a whiteboard or um, maybe it was one of the TikTok comments or something, uh, a whiteboard, you know, when we're recording to write down the tangents, write down yeah. the points, you know, so we can revert. It's like a fucking a hierarchy or some sort of crazy brain like map. Like a flowchart kind map. of thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, don't, I don't remember what our original conversation that led to all those mini micro kind of branches was. Quick rewind, rewind. <laughs> like, so, yeah, go on, sorry. Uh, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, you, 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 go ahead. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Right, so uh, originally talking about how busy we were, uh, how things have been going, how your holiday was going, um, and then I don't know where it all fell apart, so, yeah. Yeah, um, this is... This is enough content for it to be its own episode, but this isn't its own episode. It's an intro to an episode. Yeah. Well, uh, as usual, and... we end up just talking absolute fucking bollocks for ages. Yeah. Well, that's that's the way it goes. Um, so at this point, I think we should introduce who our special guest is for this. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, so I remember another fucking tangent before we do that. Um, I remember when you texted me now, we have been talking about getting this guest on for a couple of weeks, maybe a month or yeah. so. And, you know, we're trying to organize schedules and all this stuff. And then I remember one of the evenings you text you, you were texting him and you said, well, let's just see if he can come on on Thursday, if he can meet on Thursday. And I was like, fuck no. you like, Jesus, I'm just, <laughs> like my whole body went into shutdown mode. I was like, is this lad mad? Like what? How am I going to yeah, interview somebody or, you know, have a conversation with a um, complete stranger and stuff like this. And as we've been talking about this whole situation and just kind of doing strange and different things outside of my comfort zone and that kind of fear I'm kind of, you know, gravitating towards that fear now. Yeah. When I feel that I'm stepping into it, I'm kind of embracing it. So we said, yeah, we got we got him on on Thursday, and it was fantastic. And we kind of haven't really stopped talking since. We kind of became yeah. fast friends, and um, yeah, really happy that you had the balls to grow and <laughs> accost this man on the internet and see if he would pop on and have a, have a chat with us about um, his new diagnosis. So yeah. give us a little bit of uh, background on our mystery guest, Stephen. Yeah, so the big reveal, our mystery guest is uh, Stephen Davey, who is a, he's a radio, radio DJ. He is a voiceover artist. He is a TV presenter. Pre uh, he's a radio DJ for uh, Today FM and Dublin City FM. You'll hear his voice on the likes of uh, Channel 4, he does RTE, ITV, he does loads of voiceover stuff. The stuff that I was completely blown away by that he does was the super value in store ad. That blew my mind. And I, I like when I first got in touch with him and I was talking to him, I felt really foolish because I was really starstruck yeah. when we were talking. I was like, I know your voice. I like you're you're like a person, you know, like um so yeah, it's it's Stephen Daly. It's been an absolute honor and a dream to get to know him over uh, this period of time. And just as you said, the conversation hasn't really stopped. And that just goes to show how like when you get an, an adult ADHD diagnosis, how little support there actually is. The three of us yeah. just instantly bonded and we're sharing experiences, we're sharing stories. And like, it feels like we never really turned off the microphone. We've been talking the whole, like, that's, that's a good few weeks ago now and we're still talking. But yeah, yeah. it's Stephen Daly and it, it's an absolute dream to have him on. Cool. So let's uh, flip over to that then and uh, we'll come back after the uh, conversation. Cool lads thank you so much for having me on and like what an introduction you know what i mean i i know like honey toned is a, is a great way to put it but like you know it's it's uh yeah it's good you know it's what i do so 11 to 2 on saturdays like loads of tv radio bits and like i'll share you with you the secret right the the one thing that people always get excited about so forget like being on the telly and rte or on virgin media forget working in the uk and channel 4 say fm any of that the one thing people always go holy shit is when they find out that i'm the in-store voice of mr price 
right. I know. I've been it's telling people the, <laughs> the super value one. <clears throat> I did not know the Mr. Price one, and you have just so, blown my they mind. They love it. Yeah, like it's always the one that people get so excited. Are you, Mr. Price, no way. <laughs> so yeah, and like forget any of the other stuff. Like Mr. Price is the one that people are like, yeah, that's that's the guy. So yeah, then when you're in there, you'll always be like, this week special offers, Mr. Price. Uh, yeah, there you go. Nice. We'll have to get you to do a voiceover for for the for the podcast. Glad to, <laughs> glad to. And also, I just noticed today that you have a partnership with ADHD now. Yeah, so again, like, you know, it's it's one of those things that just came out of the ether, kind of like you guys being on the podcast, or like all the things that kind of just materialize. I got an email from the guys at ADHD now saying, look, we saw your videos, we saw your diagnosis, we saw your kind of whole journey that you were going on, and we'd love to kind of partner with you to kind of spread the word or to like help people kind of get involved. And like, it's one thing, and I know we'll talk about it, and we'll probably jump around a little bit in terms yeah. of kind of diagnosis and the journey and the whole lot, but it's one thing that I was very conscious of, you know, when I got a diagnosis and when I started to understand a bit more about myself was, Jesus, like, this is so many of us, and, like, there are so many people who are probably feeling the same, and I'm sure you lads can relate to it as well, and, you know, people listening. Like, you do kind of feel like, what is wrong with me? Why am I such a weird person? Why am I such a funny fish? Why am I, like... Why can't I just be a normal yeah. human in the way? And look, look, at the end of the day, nobody's normal. Everyone has their thing. Mm -hmm. But you know that there is something about you that just isn't connecting right or firing right. Or, you know, when you've, to put a technical term on it, like you've, you've plugged in all the Christmas lights, but they're just not working for some reason. It's like one of the little bulbs is loose somewhere. Yeah. So like the one thing for me was like spreading this awareness of actually that ADHD can be so many things. And I know you guys covered it as well, but like, and, and I'm sorry, if they, I, I don't mean to offend or anything with this, like, but we're all of a similar age, lads. We're all like, you know, kind of chubby dudes with beards, like, you know, glasses and the whole lot. So we're all of a similar age. When we were going to school, and I'm sure you guys were the same, ADHD wasn't really a thing. And it was more about the hyperactivity yeah. end of it. So like yeah. there were kids who couldn't sit down or couldn't like, you know, in you know, behave themselves for want of a better yeah, word. Yeah, it was behave the, themselves is the wrong word the as well. But yeah. Yeah, the Messers, like that was a that was the ADHD thing, and like we yeah. didn't really even have the label for it. But it, you know, it's it's so much more than what people think of, like people blinking independently because they're like, you know, so like wired on whatever planet they're on, like you know. So that was something yeah. I just wanted to share as well, like that there were so many different ways it can affect you. One of the things that we we talked about a few times in a few of the other recordings was like, how do you how do you describe it from your own point of view, and the Christmas light bulb idea is really is a really good one um i think yeah, my one yeah. was like there's invisible obstacles you know there's something strange yes. going on in your own life or in your own world that doesn't seem to affect other people um for sure but then once you figure out what it is you're like jesus those obstacles don't exist I, anymore i was saying in a couple of my videos as well and in the one i posted earlier on today that like for me anyway and again it's slightly different for everyone but for me it was like there were too many tabs open in, in a browser in my brain and most of the time it was fine like things would be slow and sluggish there'd be pressure there'd be tension there'd be whatever else and most of the time i could just about manage with all these tabs open but every so often it would just go zoom and i would just power down completely and i'd have to go missing for a couple of weeks out of work because i just would be burnt out i wouldn't be able to get off the, the couch out of the bed and the whole lot and like not only would you be physically exhausted but actually in your head like like, you know, growing, growing up in North County, Dublin, Stephen, I'm sure you get this hard. I can't remember where you're from, but like, do you remember we'd say like, oh, my head is wrecked. That was yeah. something that we always said in school, like, ah, oh, your head wrecked. And um, it would just be like, your brain is just completely fried. So not only are you physically unwell, but actually in your head, you're like, there's something not right here. So browsers and Christmas lights is, is my You've way. You've thought to about this far too it. much. They're, to, they're two on point, <laughs> those two uh, analogies. Well, yeah. Do you know what I do, Harv? Like, you know, I, I'm all about succinct communication here. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> ADHD and succinct communication are not two yeah, I know. concepts to go together. Uh, mine was uh, a jigsaw piece, a uh, missing jigsaw piece. Because um, right. I always knew that there was something missing, not necessarily that it was like, I I, I kind of said it in, a, in another episode, and that's an episode that, by the time this comes out, we'll, we'll be out already, uh, where we talk about our respective diagnoses, diagnoses that yes. we've uh, that we've both had. Um, and I've gone through kind of various different directions of trying to find out what the something wrong was. And wrong is the wrong word. But, yeah, of um, course, yeah. but it's the most simple like, way to describe it. 
Absolutely. And it's the one that people understand. And when I was kind of looking what it could be, I like I went down autism routes, I went down various different uh, different routes of trying to figure out what the the bit missing was. And when I it's in it's in the other episode, I tell tell the whole story, but when I actually hit on ADHD, it was like, oh, all the boxes were ticked, all the all the pieces aligned and the jigsaw was complete. And it, it literally felt like a clicking into place. And it was something that I'd never really experienced, but uh, it's something that I, like when I've talked to people, they all have a similar story to, that the three of us have just shared there, where there's like the Christmas lights or the, the, the obstacles, things like that. But um, what actually led you to, like you said about growing up in North County, Dublin and things, and uh, what, what actually led you to explore a diagnosis? Like I know it was fairly late in life, but yeah. did you have any idea in early life or anything? I'm so glad you asked, right? And looking back now, I could see that it was probably there in different ways all throughout childhood, all throughout kind of being a teenager in school, college, whatever else. But actually what led me to it was, and actually I was, I was speaking to... um this is like it sounds like i'm name dropping like clang i was uh, speaking to a journalist from the uh, the independent about this whole area as well they did a, a feature piece on this like you know and for me the big thing that kind of ticked a lot of boxes was tiktok yeah. right so like you know and and you know people think oh it's just where you go to learn dances and like see what see what the kids are up to but having gotten into tiktok i found my way to adhd tiktok you know through whatever and just listening to the way people spoke about the symptoms they had or the things they experienced i started to piece a lot of it together and like my partner was very um very supportive of all this so so my partner grew up in canada where things seem to work a little bit better than they do in ireland and we'll just leave it at that because we can go on a whole other podcast about that but you know she would have a very kind of open way of kind of diagnosing these things or, or like you know it's just a bit more clued in or a bit more together it's a bit more concrete and she was like yeah 200 percent, you have adhd for sure and like go and do the 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 test or the the assessment or whatever else and again it was one of those things that i put on the long finger for the longest time was that early in the relationship Stephen, or was that kind of later down the line so early in the relationship she probably twigged that hang on there's something not right here as in like and and again like you know it's pros and cons and i'm sure you lads have the same where there are both good and bad parts to this thing. And like, there are some amazing skills you get from it. And like, you know, I was talking to a, another friend of mine who I actually don't know if he has a diagnosis, but he, he works in the, the creative industries as well. You know, he's a writer for TV and various bits and pieces, but if he hasn't diagnosed it, he, he is undiagnosed and he's kind of just gone along with, you know, watching videos like we have and kind of went yeah i have it without actually taking the step of getting an official one but as he put it you don't see too many accountants with adhd so (laughs) like there is a whole side of it that brings this wonderful and i want to say madness like you know it brings this madness this energy or this thing you know where where you've got this creative spark or whatever in you but then it also brings all the bad bits so she was able to kind of look at that and go yeah hang on there's something not right here and, you know, it would kind of lead me towards those videos and be like, you see this here? That's you. That's you there. That's you. And the more I watched it, the more I was like, yeah, holy God, this is me. Like, you know, and then from there, I just kind of worked out, you know, I put it on the long finger for ages about getting a diagnosis, you know, but I eventually just took the plunge last year. And yeah, like I spoke to, um, so I went through a company and people ask this all the time, where did you go or how did you go about it? And I'm sure you guys get it all the time yeah, too, absolutely, because, yeah. you know, obviously you can go to your GP and you can start the whole kind of public health route that takes forever to go with it. I ended up going privately and I went to a company called um, Doctor Online yeah. who do like a three-step process. Now it's an expensive enough process and I always yeah. say that to anyone, but well worth it like so you do two consultations with a psychologist and then one with a psychiatrist and like within you know actually and i was like laughing like so funny typical adhd i scheduled an appointment with the psychologist and forgot that it was a thing (laughs) (laughs) like totally like went out of my head times dates everything completely even though i had done it and spent so much money on it the guy rang me and was like i'm sitting here waiting for you where are you why aren't you doing this like and then when I explained, he was like, I don't even need to do anything else with you. I can already tell this is going to be, this is going to be good. Um, 
and it was great to work through it with him and he was very supportive and loads of like different skills and we did like all sorts of assessments where you rank things and you mark things and there's loads of boxes to tick and score things out of you know like the old office thing like you know somewhat disagree yeah, yeah, not yeah. at all yeah, yeah yeah so like we went through the whole thing and it, it was great to do but yeah it was it, so to, to circle back in a very long-winded way um welcome to the club to work but yeah hey, listen <laughs> uh it was it was uh tiktok and then also my partner had kind of just prompted me to get it and and here we are you know yeah yeah it's funny you say about uh canada my uh, daughter was actually born in Canada uh, through surrogacy and yes, yeah. I got to see firsthand what the medical care lo- is like over there in the health system Definitely. and it's yeah. like miles away from streets ahead like yeah yeah, yeah. we um both both of us went private as well yeah, uh, we yeah. got slightly yeah. different stories but uh, it both ended up going down the same kind of private route um, I was a little bit different to you. I was, um, for the first appointment, I was sitting in the lap, at the laptop uh, three hours before the appointment right, because yeah. I was like, this it, this is now taking over my day. It's the only thing that could possibly happen today. If I don't, if I don't do this, it's not going to happen. So uh, it's like the polar opposite, but on literally on the same kind of, on the same kind of spectrum, but it's just, it's, there's so many different types there's so many different ways uh, like that it manifests and like when i was growing up it's funny that you're saying about the like the methods that absolutely wasn't me yeah. i was probably one of the one of the best kids this in the class so was like, yeah. same yeah. yeah exactly and it was like for various different reasons i was like it was completely missed and i was like really bookish and like a nerd and same. like Back in the day, we were called mushers, but like emos yeah, now, and like the we were mushers, <laughs> yeah, the outskirt kids, like um, yeah. But now looking back, it was like there's definite science, and if there was the kind of level of expertise as there is now, it would probably be picked up. But it's it's definitely there. It's just mm-hmm. it wasn't like the what people kind of presume is yeah. the symptoms, like which is actually ba- badly it's behaved. Kind of or, funny, like when you look at the history of the the condition you know it used to be called add and they've yes. changed it to adhd to include the hyperactivity even though you know going from how it used to be we're now kind of looking at more aspects outside of the hyperactivity Stephen, are you rocking one of those stanley cups or is that just a giant water bottle it's it's a giant water bottle i haven't quite gotten to the stanley cup but it has been a conversation. Be all over it you know what i mean oh it's <laughs> it's it's on the way like i can't i can't lie it's gonna happen i'm an absolute whore for a trend <laughs> love a trend love a bandwagon and sorry just to, to jump on it there and again it, if i'm taking over it's just the force of a lifetime of a habit right you're it's so interesting you say speak away a bit, listen you know that's what it's all about the, <laughs> it's interesting you say about the quietness the bookishness because i was the exact same I, like i was a fairly decent student yeah. you know yeah. like it was there was nothing like that you would raise a flag with but i suppose the big things for me was like i had a lot a lot of social anxiety like couldn't like i remember hating going to school and i think for the first two years of primary school something just would not let me go out to the yard at playtime so they would have to like keep me in the classroom because i just could not handle it and again like that was probably something that could have or should have been picked up on but we just didn't yeah. have the expertise or whatever yeah. around it but that idea of this I, like control is the wrong word but just the the unorganizedness of it the chaos of it the na- the noise of it any of that kind of stuff i just could not do and as i grew i you know i learned to get over those things but one thing with me and i always say like i was the shyest quietest kid ever like that quite bookish like i remember my parents going to parent teacher meetings and teachers saying stuff like no he's he's not in my class and like i was definitely in the class but just because i would just keep my head down and just go about it and just do my homework and never look for any sort of attention at all they just were like i, I don't know who this kid is but from from then to go work from that into into media there's obviously something in that as well where this is this complete paradox behavior where you are so introverted but also so comfortable with getting on the radio and talking to like 180,000 people a week or broadcasting to you know half a million people on RT or whatever like you yeah. know it's, there's there's a weird disconnect in that as well and i suppose to make a very long-winded point particularly through my work because this was something i always wanted to do i got very good at masking elements of my adhd my personality or whatever else as well so even though inside i didn't want to mix with people i was too shy too awkward too nervous too anxious to go anywhere i was able to put on this kind of front 
and bravado was the wrong word because I would like to think I was never arrogant with it or, or, or rude or overly cocky, but it just meant I was able to put on this like, hey, welcome to the show kind of vibe. Um, yeah. And it, it did it so well that I managed to you know get on TV, get on radio or be wheeled out to meet clients. You know, it's 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 a mad thing as well. And it's it's a coping mechanism, I suppose. It, is it is it a kind yeah. of character that you developed? I suppose it is in a way. Do you know what I mean? And And when I'm that character, it's much easier to yeah. be what you think is that thing of normal without those missing bits or the blinking Christmas lights bulb or whatever else. Do you know what I mean? It's almost like you focus all your attention into it like you might do with an ADHD related hobby or, you know, you focus everything into this thing and it's very easy to do, but it's absolutely exhausting. I was just going to come to that. So I I did a very similar thing in my work life. Okay. So I'm very, generally very casual and relaxed, you know, in my kind of normal day-to-day life but when I go into work or when I'm in interviews or anything kind of formal like that I have this front or this kind of mask you know character that I try to um I I try to emulate but on those days where I do that when I get home I'm completely dead you know I have absolutely no energy and for such a long time I didn't understand what that was myself and Stephen talked about it previously you know about what is masking and how do you determine like what's you and what's not you what are you kind of putting up in front of yourself and how how, how does that change but uh, I never realized that I was playing a character I was just at yeah. work and that yeah. was my work self if you know what I mean but yeah Jesus the the exhaustion at the end of the day in, in situations like I know, that is insane I know you guys are, are are quite close like you know your your pals and you would know each other you know quite well and similar with me you know I've got friends who would know me very well but most people to 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 kind of like think about me they would have a very different picture to how i actually am and i'm sure you guys are the same like you're talking about work hard there like do you know what i mean i'm sure if you were to ask people in work who aren't necessarily your mates how you are when you're not at work they would have no idea they don't recognize this person at all like yeah. you know it's a complete different suit almost you know yeah absolutely and i I'd, I'd be the same and i'm only kind of just coming to the realization that like that's something that I do as well and like in school I was always known as like a bit of a social butterfly and I had one one friend who was like super super close but she knew that like I would disappear from the group for like weeks months at a time and it was just kind of known that I was jumping from group to group to group and it was kind of like when the group I was in got too close or got too yeah got 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 to kind of see what I was actually like, I'd move on to a different group. But I was still kind of maintaining the connections. And I didn't even yeah. realize I did that. Like when I when it was kind of put to me that that's what I was doing and that I was a different person in each group, I was like, I was deeply offended because I was like, yeah. that is absolutely not the way I am. I, I don't believe in like people being two-faced and all this kind of stuff. And I didn't understand that what I was doing was exactly that, just masking who I was, what was going on and how I was feeling. And it's like, I even like right now in this moment, I'm realizing things that I've done and it's just, it's absolutely mind blowing to kind of replay things in your head and realize what you're doing and hearing you both share your experience. And it's like, Oh, these things that have kind of just locked away in my brain as almost like negative self impressions. I'm able to kind of like like a lifetime worth of stuff that you're just kind of uncovering. Yeah. And I'm allowed now kind of not use it as an excuse, but to understand it, you know, like I'm able to kind of go, Oh, that's why this happened. That's why. And like those kind of 4am thoughts that like you wake up and you can't sleep again for they oh, stop playing yeah. then. Yeah, I think we all yeah. have those. It's, it's, it's almost like having a, a giant dragon or something locked in the basement. And the first couple of times you go down there, you get absolutely scorched to bits. But then you yeah. kind of make yourself armor and you make yourself a sword. And then like you're able to go in and attack it a little bit. And then maybe you have to retreat and come back with the bazooka. Do you know what I mean? It's <laughs> like just paring away those layers to just make it better able. And it's one thing. And again, this could be jumping all over the place, but it's one thing I say to people who ask me and loads of people ask me about ADHD. But the one thing I always say is even if you don't do medication, even if you don't go that far, just getting this diagnosis or even the confirmation that yes, you have ADHD straight away, like you say, the jigsaw clicks and all of a sudden you just go, well, thank 
God, that I'm not actually just a bad person or like a shit friend yes. or, a, you know, a, a mental case or whatever the whatever the things you're feeling. It, it As you say, it doesn't make it OK. It doesn't take away some of the shitty things you might have done. Yeah. But at least it just gives you a reason that you're able to kind of go, well, that's why I did what I did or I do what I do or I thought what I thought. And that for me is huge. Like it just lifts this like weight off. And like to jump a little bit further onto it as well. So I am um, I, I have a little boy who's who's four. So I'm divorced from his mom. And like, you know, I was reading more about how ADHD can affect your relationships. And I know that I mean, look, there's always two sides to every story. There's always two to tango and everything else in relationships. I'm sure you can relate to it as well. Oh, but yeah, I know absolutely. that lots of behaviors that I had during that were all down to this yeah. ADHD thing. I'm not shirking any responsibility for that. But I know that knowing what I know now, I could have acted differently. That's the thing. It's and not, like, you know, it's not getting rid yeah. of that responsibility. You're owning yeah, it now. Yeah. You know, you're taking the responsibility. Totally, yeah, yeah. It's just that you weren't and aware just, at the time that it was yeah. your responsibility. And I'd always own it. That's not the problem. Yeah. But actually being able to understand why I'm owning it is is huge. And like, you know, we're, we we co-parent and like it's it's grand. Like there was nothing ever hugely bad in it. But like to go, you know, from being married to somebody to not is um is a big thing. Like, you know, and there's obviously something has happened irreparably in that relationship. And I think for me, my, my kind of ADHD symptoms really worsened around COVID. I don't know why that was a huge change for me. Again, it was because I had been masking for so long. I had been doing so many things for so long that I was kind of forced to sit with myself yeah for long periods at home with just one other person to talk to and a small baby. And you're kind of going like, there's something not right here. And, you know, the relationship deteriorated and look, it happened as it did. But definitely for me, since COVID, I have found the symptoms that I have had are worse. Like I am so impatient. I am so like, I am way quicker to be so frustrated with everyone short with everyone cranky bastard like you know i don't know what it is it's like that just flicked a switch and pushed up the adhd like from 20 percent some days 50 percent other days to like you know a strong 70 percent most days yeah. like you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah 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 that actually we mentioned that in the first episode that harv is basically just an abrasive bastard um yeah, yeah. but that I, that's nothing to do with adhd that's yeah. okay. just <laughs> Um, that's a choice that's a conscious choice <laughs> yeah, my, look you're living that lifestyle and you own it <laughs> absolutely um the medication side of things like yeah. you're saying there about the like the frustration and the impatience i yeah. like while i've always been kind of highly strung but i would always think of myself as super super easy going and i'm absolutely Same. not yeah <laughs> uh, but when i went on the medication I like it helps so many different things uh, like yeah. that's another episode that we've discussed about all the benefits and the potential side yeah. effects one of the the major ones for me was I was so fast to get irritated and like yeah. in my head I was like no I'm just being really assertive I'm just standing up for things I believe in. yeah yeah no I was I was a proper rage monster um, and I had to talk to my psychiatrist back and forth and like go through a whole like medication adjustment process um like it was it was it was fun like you're you were you were diagnosed in november weren't you that's right yeah yeah i was just before you i was september and yeah. no, end of august and started the medication in september and i think we only kind of hit the like the sweet spot about a month or two ago um yeah. and like there were a couple of times where we were like uh, when i say we i mean me and my husband graham yeah um yeah we we were kind of like I, I i'm gonna have to get in touch with the psychiatrist and we're gonna have to come up with something else because this is while yeah. yeah while yeah. some arguments are stopped in terms of like Stephen remembers to do the washing or bring the bins out uh now he's getting absolutely enraged because a car went around the roundabout the wrong way um <laughs> no don't just yeah, do that so, normally you know <laughs> It could be one of those things. It's interesting you touch on that too, because like I'm still trying to figure out. So I'm on 20 milligrams of slow release Ritalin, yeah. I think it's called. Like, which, And I always think it's so funny the way they describe it. It almost sounds like you're drinking a nice wine. Like, you know, it's got bouquets of you know, <laughs> yeah. Riesling and a fruity palate. Um, so 20 milligrams of slow release uh, Ritalin every single day. And like, yeah, definitely when I took it straight away, like the first couple of days, I was like, wow, this is amazing. I've got so much processing power in this computer. The tabs aren't slowing me down anymore. And like that, I was like way chiller and like stuff that would have sent me into a rage spiral 
or a huge frustration. I was just like, meh, no big deal. But now I find, you know, as I'm still trying to level it out, there can be things like that. Something ridiculous will set me off into like a banana's rage where I'll just be ranty McRanterson for like four hours or I have to go off for a drive in the car myself just to calm down. And then I will beep at somebody and got into like, you know, a, a spat on the side of the road about some gobshite who's in the way. Do you know what I mean? Like, so there'll just be days where there's no fix in it. Like, do you know, and actually I, I was reading a thread. I don't know if you ever guys ever go on Reddit, right? I'm, I'm relatively new to Reddit as a concept, right? I, I So... It, it, as an aside, I started reading this great series of books and I was so obsessed with this like magical world of these books. Like it was like Harry Potter meets the bill. It was class. <laughs> like um, it was brilliant. I'll, I'll give you the name afterwards. Yeah, but, absolutely. Um, they're, they're Rivers of London by Ben Aranovich. There you go. Big, big drop there. Of, of I'll have to get on to him and say, listen, yeah, yeah. Good. I don't know the guy. But, I'm just saying. <laughs> but they are class books. Honestly, it's like set in modern day London, like the bill meets Harry Potter, wizard police. It's class. I loved it so much that I went and found the like thread or whatever you call it on Reddit. And that led me to Reddit where I learned more about ADHD. But I was reading a post that somebody put up there the other day and they were just like, I can't explain this, but I'm just a fucking nightmare today. Like, I'm just off to cause a row with anyone I can. I'm super belligerent. And actually, what and really echoed with me on the days where I am really belligerent. It was um, the day before Mother's Day, and they were like, I'm off to ask my, my siblings now if they know when Mother's Day is and absolutely crush them when Jesus. they haven't ordered anything. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, they knew, they knew that they had a present ordered and that Mother's Day was the next day, but they were just going to test how far their siblings were going to go in uselessness and then crush them with it. And I was like, that's, I, I, I can relate and also kind of admire that level of, of petty belligerence like you know oh, sometimes you just need a good row yeah, yeah yeah definitely yeah yeah and I'm sure I'm sure all of our partners would just kind of go no you don't you don't need a good row just stop but yeah we love a good row you know oh yeah, That's it, yeah. and <clears throat> we've we've uh we've a lot of kids in this house Stephen you'll, you'll probably find out that that over time but um <laughs> we've recently had two of them diagnosed um and right literally scrolling through tiktok the other morning waiting to go to school and came across this post that said when your kids are kind of like you know arguing with you they're looking for that dopamine release that they don't get from other things and when you give out to them you know when you're kind of engaging with that behavior they just want to push it more they don't know why they're doing it they're just constantly doing it you say don't do that or whatever you know you need to kind of go and get ready get, get your lunch sorted or whatever and then there's an argument then you're kind of on top of yeah. it again. And it's really just kind of ju- this absorption that they're trying to do, pull in that dopamine. And it, it's just wild. Yeah, like, absolutely. But obviously the, the medication uh, doesn't seem to <laughs> relax that across the board, you know? Not not always. Like it's just days where it just doesn't seem to work. And again, it's probably just that sweet spot of figuring out where it is for you. But it's interesting you say about your kids, because I was going to ask as well, like, you know, with my guy who's four, like I can see little bits and pieces of me. Yeah in him and like he's he's quite similar to me in lots of ways and i'm like where do we where do we go with this do we do anything yet and i kind of i've asked a few kind of questions of psychiatrists you know parenting experts you know all that kind of stuff and they're saying no just leave him off for now he's fine when he gets a little bit older you can start looking at it but there are things i'm going like if I had known or my parents had known, would this have been easier? And then you get this whole like, oh, Christ, I'm I'm ruining his life, too. And yeah. like, it's a dramatic way to be because my life wasn't ruined. But like, you're going, I don't want this for him. What am I going to do? And you just spiral around like that, you know? It is, yeah, yeah, you, you kind fair. of wonder, are you like hyper focusing on like I'm just looking at everything and focusing it through that. But yeah, mine yeah. is she's 16 months. Her like today, she was like she spent a good hour playing with her foot and her shoes. So she's Great. probably like really similar to me in that sense. Um, but yeah, no, she's, I don't think we'd really see any, any of that with, with her yet, but um, it's definitely going to be something that I'm like keeping an eye on knowing that how it would have impacted just, me. Yeah. But I don't yeah, want it no, to be no, just the. Damage is probably the wrong word, but like knowing the, the impacts it can have, yeah, I suppose. The way I, just want to be aware the way I look at it from my own perspective, looking back on it is lost potential. You know, if we'd have caught it sooner, what could I have achieved that I wasn't able to achieve without the medication or without the support? But uh, yeah, e- Evie, my daughter, we've we've five kids in the house, but only one is uh, is our our daughter, um, and she's two and a half. And we, myself and my wife are hundred percent convinced she has ADHD. She's absolutely wild, and yeah. she's just like a little clone yeah. of me in all of the ADHD yeah. aspects. So uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's gonna be a, an interesting. She's so a, a tornado in child form. 
Good. I like that though. That's that's good. It'll keep you keep you on your feet and keep you out of mischief, Harvey. You know? <laughs> Fair to say. How has like since you got the diagnosis, how has that in fact it, like impacted your work situation? Like you're quite open, you're quite vocal about it. How is that like manifested in work and how does it affect your home life? Because I know how it yeah. how it is for me. So it's a great question. So I think at home it's it's definitely made things easier. Because as I say, there are most, like 90% of the time, I am way chiller than I was. Do you know what I mean? Whereas before it was, you know, 40% of the time, 30% of the time maybe. But like now I'm I'm generally tending to let things go. I'm more amenable and just easier to rub along or things that would have sent me into a stressy panic cycle don't do that as much. So therefore I'm not as quick to be irritated or snappy or whatever you want to call it. So home life, yeah, definitely way better. In work, it hasn't really made a huge amount of difference, I'll be honest with you. The only thing I can mention kind of from a work point of view is I was having a chat with my boss in Today FM like a few weeks ago over some other stuff that he was looking for me to do. And like, so I do loads of different things, you know, work-wise as, as we talked about. So one of the things I do is I'm a content manager for St. Vincent de Paul. So I, I'm kind of working, making videos or making graphics or, you know, writing copy and come up with concepts for for them to push their message i do the radio stuff and i do a lot of voiceover stuff and then i do a lot of ad production and consulting bits and pieces on the side again it's probably an adhd thing that i just want to be busy all the time i'm sure you guys are are the same but one of my boss my boss said to me look you know there's a bit of moving around in this thing i'm looking for you to do how would you manage that with your diagnosis and i was kind of like I don't really know what way to take that. Do you know what kind of way? Because I'm like, why, why wouldn't I manage it? Like, I'm a professional. It's no big deal. Yeah. But at the same time, I know he was kind of <clears throat> meaning it in a nice way, but maybe being very indelicate about it. But that's kind of the only time it's really come up as such. And yeah. like, we got over it. It was grand and we worked around it. And, you know, I've, I've done loads of traveling, done loads of moving around and bits and pieces. Like, so it's not something that, that will hugely discommode me. But I was kind of going, I don't really know if you should be that indelicate about it. Do you know that kind of way? Yeah. Is yeah that, yeah weird that's, to say. I, I just found it no strange. that's absolutely like it's kind of like i was very very open with my boss when i got the diagnosis i like i fully believe in being upfront with things like that totally. and like he's he's raised it a few times in like indirectly he'll say how are things do you need any assistance but the thing about getting a diagnosis in your adult life you already have a lot of coping skills yeah. in place you've already totally. learned how to manage these things like you were saying there's a lot of moving around and you're used to doing that yeah. so yeah how will you manage that with the diagnosis the same way you did before just you know do you know what i mean you just if you start to get on with it like you know yeah, exactly. yeah yeah it's it's kind of just the way it is so i suppose to answer the question like you know it's 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 better in loads lost, of ways even apart from that i think sorry yeah, i think he's... are we gone uh oh my god can you hear me oh you're back now there you go yeah Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I um I looked up and Harv was frozen and Stephen, you had just finished moving and I was like, Oh wait, hang on, we're gone. <laughs> um sorry about that. Um <laughs> no, so fine. no, just just to answer the question, I, I suppose like better in loads of ways and I think other people in my life are just kind of figuring out what that means, do you know, that kind of way. And and like I'm sure as we said, like we're we're similar ages. Um I don't know how, like, your parents, you know, have they found this kind of whole thing? Like, so I'm the eldest of five, right, of five siblings. And, you know, I, I'd be talking to my mom about ADHD or what that means or whatever else. And she doesn't fully get it, but she wants to be supportive. But she would just say things like, you know, oh, be careful, like, you know, don't be ordering tablets off the internet or anything. Like, and I'm like, I, I don't really know what what you think what you think this is <laughs> like, i'm not on the dark web getting like you know a load of heroin like do you know what i mean um Bricks of she's Ritalin. trying but yeah yeah do you know what i mean she's trying but i just don't know if fully she's she's gotten it like do you know that kind of yeah my yeah. like in my family there's a pretty long line of autism uh like right. my brother has autism my niece and nephew both have it there's various cousins i like i'm convinced my dad did um, and yeah, I'm not even going to like mention what my mom has because that's an <laughs> ongoing conversation that can never be <laughs> openly talked about. Um, but we won't tell her. Yeah, <laughs> oh, we tell her all the time. But, like <laughs> it's never going to go any further. But uh, the she just kind of went, "All oh, right, so yeah, okay, you, you go do you." Like, yeah, so, you do you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And it's interesting as well, like you say, like my dad definitely has it, but like comes from a generation where this isn't even yeah, a thing. Yeah. Like yeah. he's he's never watched a full film in his life. Like, you know, and we're we're terrible for movies, my my family. Like I and people are always fascinated by this. And I actually think there's a podcast idea in this, but like I've never seen Back to the Future. I've never seen like any Indiana Jones. I've never seen E.T. I've never seen Goonies. I've never seen, you know, those things people are like, oh, my God, yeah. the classics. Because we just didn't have, and looking at it now, we didn't have the attention yeah. to do it, but we would always just go and play football or go read a book or whatever instead because that's all we ever did. And, like, you know, there was a necessity to, to it because it was, like, the 80s and, you know, everyone was poor. But, like, Dad worked, like, three jobs. But also, how much of that was because he was just incapable of not? Do you know what yeah. I mean? And that was yeah. the other thing with me. I'm always have to be busy, and I'm sure you guys are the same. I have to be busy, or else like all sorts of terrible things happen. Like I can't go on. Like if I go on a holiday, it has to be a city break because I need to be able to go and do things. Because sitting by the pool with myself and my ADHD brain, I just can't do that. I just like this is a disaster for everyone, and I will fight with everyone. Like you know, so um, we we were always at this. Like you know, so. Uh, my dad was the same and then my, my granddad was the exact same as well. Like, you know, and looking at mannerisms or looking at the way he would interact with things. And like, even looking at my granddad now, you know, who I was very close to, like, you know, I'm very similar to my granddad in loads of ways, even more so than my dad. Like he would have these things where he would be the most gregarious outgoing guy with stories and, you know, chat for everyone. But then if somebody rang the house, yeah, he would hear the phone ring and he would say, I'm not here. And like, you'd have to lie to whoever's on the phone. Like, oh no, he's not here. He's just gone out. He's gone playing golf. He's gone whatever. And like, like because he just was like, I can't do this. And then something else with him was, I don't know if this is ADHD related or if he was just weird, but like he was convinced every year he was going to die. So like from like October to like February, he would just take to the bed as he got older. Like, do you know what I mean? Obviously when he was working, it gave him something to do. But when he retired, he like, I don't know if it was seasonal affective disorder on top of yeah. ADHD or whatever, but he was like, this is it. I'm going to die this year. I'm just going to go to bed and I'm just going to be depressed from like April to March <laughs> or, you know, or sorry, October yeah, to March. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. It's really yeah. Interesting. When I was younger, I had that fascination as well. Like right yeah. through my teenage years, even right into the beginning of the relationship with Graham, I was like, I'm going to die young. It's just, it's a fact. It's not, it's not yeah. morbid fascination. It's absolutely a fact. It's yeah, going yeah. to happen. Yeah. Uh, so maybe that is, yeah, I could be. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually notes. Cause now that you bring that up, I've, I, I was always like that when I was younger as well. That's yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And it was just like, I'm going to die and that's it. And like, there's no, but it, it, again, it can be that thing of like this, this compulsive thought or like, it's just, it's just there and you can't shake it no matter how unfounded it might be or whatever else. Sorry, can I ask you lads, right? Are are you, where do you come like in siblings? Are you guys older? Are you younger? What what way are you? So, I'm, I'm working baby. on a theory here. So you're the baby. I'm the you? eldest okay, of right. three boys. Yeah. So I wondered if it was something to do with being the eldest that we we felt this way, but Stephen's just blown out of the world. Broken so theory, forget yeah. my forget my theory here. Get Trinity off the yes. phone. We don't need the grant. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the I'm the youngest of three. Yeah, I wondered if it was an attention thing, like, you know, because you were saying about, like, how the kids are getting that dopamine off it. So, like, you know, yeah. maybe it's it's something in it. But, yeah, I don't know. It Forget could be an attention thing because <laughs> I'm known for being an attention horse. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it probably is related to attention, just in an inverse kind of situation. For sure. Uh, I think we've, we've rambled for a while here. I just want to ask you, like, what's one thing that you would like to share with people? who if they they're suspecting that this might be something that they want to explore, like they're listening to us and it's resonating with, uh, with how they feel in the same way that we've had those experiences. So what's one piece of advice that you'd give to people who might be feeling? What I would say is, you know, first of all, to go gently on yourself, because this is a big thing. Like, you know, this is a big deal. Like, you know, it's, it's life altering in as much as anything else can be because it completely affects how you think and who you are really. And, and not only affects it, but also can explain it. But we, we touched on that already. But I suppose to, to be easy with yourself and like I always say to anyone, if you can get even the diagnosis, even if that's as far as you go, it just gives you that like weight off your shoulders, reason for being like, you know, this is a deep way and it does sound a bit wanky and it does sound a bit, you know, over the top and dramatic. I mean, I do have a flair for it, but like it was almost like born again feeling yeah. almost because you were kind of like, holy shit, this is like, life giving like this is this is all encompassing i feel great that i'm not actually a crackpot you know yeah yeah it changes it changes yeah. so much like that like we were talking about that like for the last couple of months how much like when you actually get that diagnosis when you have that moment it's 
like born again is probably a great description again we're not trying to get anyone's money here we're not a religion <laughs> yeah do you know what i mean but it was even like i said to you guys at the start like listening to your podcast like i was on the verge of tears going like it's just amazing to hear people say back the things that i feel the things that i felt the things that i think the the hobbies thing where you go yeah i'm gonna be ireland's newest cricketer <laughs> and then like you go to like four weeks of cricket and then like the bat and the cup and the ball and the shoes and all the rest which just get put in the back of the wardrobe because you're now going to be ireland's new pastry chef and you've bought <laughs> yeah. a, like top of the line mixer and like 84 whisks and an apron and then like yeah it just falls by the wayside so like I, I think it's 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 just amazing to hear the things that you're experiencing parroted back to you and that was huge for me as well for you got from, from you guys rather so to to cut a long story short again with this super long answer just if you can get yourself as far as a diagnosis in whatever way you can do that like whether it's adhd now whether it's it's doctor online whether it's privately publicly whatever you can do it just gives you that sense of validation and that actually you are okay We've all had those kind of those experiences, and it's it's so valuable to actually go go down that road. We'll we'll put a few links in in the description for this. We're going to put your your independent article, same as you you dropped Dude. it so so beautifully. So uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll link to your a couple of your shows as well, and definitely Perfect. ADHD now. And uh, before we finish up, we'll ask you a few a few fun questions just to kind of please do yeah please wrap do. up. You're a known coffee snob. What's your favorite coffee? So this is a great question and it does change. And again, I found that um, coffee was a soothing thing to my ADHD. This is so I'm sure you guys are the most, same. Like crazy things going up yeah. in my childhood. So I, since I was yeah. probably like eight or nine, I've been drinking coffee and Me never too. understood yeah. why people got a buzz off it. You know, why yeah. are people going it's crazy and for hyper on coffee? It just relaxes me and yeah. I take it easy. It just relaxes me. And actually, the, that's one of the other things with my partner as well. Like, I was, like, making a cup of coffee at, like, you know, nine o'clock. And she was like, what are you doing? Like, you'll be up all night. And I was like, what are you talking about? This doesn't do that. Like, and then it was like, hang on. Now I understand yeah. why, you know. But, I um, used to go for coffee runs to uh, Starbucks with a mate at, like, one yeah. or two in the morning. Just because, like, it's just a <laughs> yeah. nice little soothing drink. And it kind of tickles your dopamine nicely, like, you know. Exactly. Um, the, uh, the coffee, so that, like, it changes because I'm always discovering new ones. At the moment, I'm drinking a lovely coffee from there are a roastery in Amsterdam, which sounds very fancy altogether. It's called DAK, D-A-K, and they have some really cool stuff. There's one they have called Coco Bongo. Big shout out for, nice. for Coco Bongo. It's the weirdest but most delicious coffee that I've ever tried. So it's almost like a fruit juice in a coffee, if that makes sense. Okay. It is so tasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tropical. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, I won't D check definitely that out. Do. I can't I'll stand fruity coffees, man. I need that. I need really? that. Really? There you go. That, that hit of... See, and coffee. I would have always said like, oh, I'm a, I mean, you know, a South American chocolatey nutty guy. But then I tried this one and I was like, whoa, like there's a party in my mouth. You know, it's I'm wearing a grass skirt, <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> If it's sugary and caramelly and, and flavory, I'm I'm sold. You're on board. Yeah, absolutely. Um okay, so you're a you're you're known for working in radio. Favorite music, favorite band. So I'm why. pretty eclectic with music. Um like I always would have been pretty eclectic, but like you, Stephen, I was I was a bit of a mosher, I suppose you'd say, back in the day. So Blink One Eighty Two are the band that I always will come back to. Like you know, they're always the one that I go to. I I like just I remember hearing all the small things when I was like eleven, and that kind of brought me to that album Enema of the State or whatever it was. And then I was like, this is it for me. Like this is great. So that led me then to like the Green Days and the Sum Forty Ones and yeah. the Offsprings and whatever else. Like you know, so that took me on that road. So that's always the one that I'll go back to. But like I could do Blink One Eighty Two in the morning, Gangster Rap in the afternoon, and a little bit of classical like you know before bed. Like so, I'm, I'm pretty eclectic. And I would say like you know mates or you know um, my other half. Like you know we'd be in the car and something will come on and I'll know it within two seconds because mu like. I always say, had I studied anything like I studied music all throughout my teens, I would be like Chief Justice of the Supreme Court or something now, you know? Yes, yeah, I'm the same as well with music. Like, I've got this one playlist that I listen to, you know, just constantly on repeat for the last, whatever, yeah. 10 years. And uh, I just add a song here and there. Just add it. new things to it. Yeah. But Jesus, like, if yeah. you were to look at it, you'd think somebody just started mashing their finger on the Spotify app, you know? <laughs> I have I have two playlists. There's like my like from radio on Spotify, which is like 250 songs of complete randomness, right. and uh, then I've like a pop punk, like No Effects, Green Day, Some Forty One, all oh, those kind yeah. of ones. 
Uh, they, I, I will take between those two. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's class. Cool. So anything else you wanted to talk about, Stephen? You know, any, any major points you wanted to hit on? We're kind of coming at this as complete noobs, as you know. So we're just trying to hit on as many different little topics as we can. But anything specific you wanted to cover? No, there's there's nothing at all. I think you guys have covered it. And like, honestly, like I was saying to Stephen, um, like keep in touch, please. I want to help with this as much as I can, because not only are you both cool guys, but like this is kind of what I do as well. So I'm happy to help. And the fact that it's in this field that I'm learning so much about, I'm just excited to. So if I can help with ideas or editing or anything you need, just give us a shout. And like, let's be, let's be ADHD pals. Like, do you know what I mean? And that's a wrap on another episode of ADH Derbcast. We hope you enjoyed this extra long, super insightful episode with the incredibly talented and all round lovely guy, Stephen Daly. We're so lucky and proud to have such a great ambassador advocating for and opening up the neurodiversity conversation to the mainstream. And next time you hear those honey toned special offers in your local supermarket, remember, we're all on this crazy ADHD ride together. Don't forget to give that like button a wallop and see if anything exciting happens. Let's keep the conversation going until next time. Until then, stay quirky, stay awesome, and keep embracing your unique ADHD journey. Take care, and we'll see you in the next episode of ADH Derbcast, where we'll talk about the untamable urge to constantly take up and change hobbies and interests.